Praise the Lord. Listen, I want to pray right now over Minneapolis because I believe uh, Minneapolis is going to be a great reform. There's going to be a great change. And we're going to see Minneapolis and Minnesota State. What's happening right now is there's an uncovering. Someone say uncovering. There's an uncovering of lawlessness and evil. And the, the wicked spirits are going to be judged. And so I believe that there's going to be something supernatural happening in Minneapolis. And Minneapolis is actually God's city. And Minneapolis is a place where God will be enthroned. He will be seated upon and above. Amen. So uh, I believe that Minneapolis, uh, what the enemy intends for evil, God will use it for good. And so there's a greater good. Of, of course, unfortunately, uh, Apostle Paul says, so, you know, uh, wherever sin abounds, grace abounds, does that mean that we should sin? However, uh, I believe that uh, even in midst of all the injustice and all the evil that's happening and taking place right now in Minneapolis, in Minnesota, and in the United States, God is allowing it to manifest and to happen because God's about to release a greater glory. God's about to release justice. Remember, people of God, uh, a few days ago, I saw a gavel come down from heaven. And in fact, this is... Uh, one of the constant uh, visions that God gives me uh, many times because, you know, when you and I, when we operate the courtrooms of heaven, uh, we know that we live in the realm of finished work. We live in the realm of it is finished. And I believe that God is bringing down the hammer of God, the word of God, and the gavel of heaven is about to smash every idol, is about to smash down every false wicked principality, every false structure, man-made idol, amen, even in the church, amen, hallelujah. So the gavel of heaven, the word of God, he is the judge. He is the supreme judge. He is the judge of all spirits. So God our king is judging state. It's judging uh, corruptions, judging Anamon, the manipulation, Jezebel, satanic rituals. God is judging the evil intention of people's hearts and minds. And uh, so you and I were meant to operate in a courtroom of heaven and not even go back and forth with the accuser. Here's the thing. Many people right now, and I'm kind of going off subject, uh, and in a minute or so, I will give some shout outs. But many people are being distracted and they're actually being caught up with the swirl. Someone say swirl. They're being caught up with the swirl of uh, going to and fro with the accuser of the brethren. Do you know that you do not need to talk to the accuser? You do not need to talk to the prosecutor. Jesus, the lawyer, he will talk for you. He will talk with him right now. So I believe that many people were, were stuck at, at a soulish level. And we are taking the bait of Satan. People of God, do not take the bait of Satan. John Bevere wrote a book years ago called The Bait of Satan. And you know what the bait of Satan is? It is offense. Do not take the bait of Satan. Because... The enemy wants you to be distracted, wants you to be confused, wants you to be maligned. The enemy wants you to be offended and wants you to be hurt. Of course, there's an injustice and we should be moved to righteous indignation. We should be, we should be moved to prayer, not just to posting. We should be moved to petitioning, not just to being vocal. All right. And that's the thing. Too many people are vocal. Too many people are loud without going to the place of prayer. Without going to uh, the place of the throne room of God. And I believe right now we're in a time and season where we're about to see uh, the remnant rise up. We're about to see the ones that have been pruned, the ones that have been refined, the ones that have been tried by fire. We're about to see those people who are aligned. Someone say aligned. Aligned with the truth, the spirit of truth. And God is raising up the remnant of people that are aligned with the spirit of truth, that have no corruption, no wicked wild, no political agenda. Come on, no cultural agenda. Come on, somebody. But listen, God loves all people. God loves Black people, Asian people, Hispanic people, brown people, white people. Someone say amen. All right. Uh, God does not see race. He does not see color. God sees children. God sees nations. All right. But listen, I want to talk to you right now. Uh, 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 I, want to, I want to talk about Pentecost power and prayer. And I did share a little bit about uh, what I was going to talk about, about too many people being distracted right now and taking the bait of Satan. Remember, I believe what the devil m means for evil in Minneapolis, God is actually exposing. And there's going to be a greater glory and restoration in Minneapolis. For I hear the Lord saying, Minneapolis will be a garden city. Minneapolis will be a city and a place of my glory, says the Lord. Minneapolis will not be shut down, but will be opened up. 
And even as the mall of America stands, I see uh, shops being flooded uh, with people. Uh, and not being looted, but flooded with people. I see shops being flooded with people. And it's going to increase. Finances are going to increase in Jesus' name. Someone say amen. Someone say praise God. Listen, I want to talk to you a little bit about Pentecost. Wow. You know, Pentecost, Penta, of course, in the original word, Penta, Pent means five. Okay, Penta, Pentagon. All right. So Pentecost means 50. All right. Uh, Pentecost in the original Hebrew word is Shavuot. Someone say Shavuot, which of course means the Feast of Weeks. But did you know that Pentecost, Shavuot, also means the Feast of the First Fruits? Someone say First Fruits. Come on now. The reason why it's called the Feast of the First Fruits is because it's the first fruits of blessings that's coming to the church. It's the first fruit. Someone say first fruit. It is the first fruit of harvest. Remember, the Bible says, honor your honor the Lord your God with the first fruit, with the first crops of your harvest. And so show ho ho. So Pentecost, Shavuot, is actually the first fruit of the harvest. Someone say, Amen. Come on, give us some hearts and life, people of God. It's the first fruit of the harvest. And God is saying that this is not the end, but this is just the beginning. This is not the last, but this is just the first. Listen, God's about to release an outpouring and God's about to do something supernatural and large and humongous. Listen, just just 30 minutes ago, I received some great news. Come on, someone say great news. Who knows that the kingdom is about good news, not bad news. The kingdom is about good news, not fake news, not sad news. The kingdom of God is about great news. Come on, Jesus is king. He rules and he reigns. Come on, the blood of Jesus speaks a better word. He's jealous over you. He fights for you. He is with you. He is for you. He's not against you. Man may come against you. Women may come against you. Flesh will fail. Horses and chariots will fail. But the battle belongs to the Lord. And so, you know, even this morning, 30 minutes ago, I got a call and we got some great news. Come on, people of God. Listen, get ready for an explosion, a Pentecost baptism. Get ready for an outpouring, an overflow of good things. Listen, in America, with all this uh, exposure of racism, you know, uh, again, racism has always been around, but with smartphones and uh, with the media manipulation, uh, it's even more exposed at certain times for certain reasons. Okay, but racism's always been around, unfortunately, but we, the church, there, the spirit of racism, the spirit of hatred, does not exist in the church. It should not. Because the church, we are unified in the blood and the spirit of God. Someone say amen. Uh, so, however, right now, there's division happening. There's distraction happening. People are taking the bait of Satan. God is discouraging people. Oh, excuse me. The devil is discouraging people. Uh, you know, yesterday I preached in Torrance, California on how uh, evil spirit came and tormented soul. Some people have been getting tormented. Listen, you, you're in anguish. You feel distraught. You feel downtrodden. You feel broken. But this is the perfect storm. This is the perfect setup. Remember, riots and revivals go hand in hand. Acts chapter 16. Listen, all this looting, all this crime, all this backlash, backbiting, all this heinous evil that's being exposed and being exterminated. And even with uh, corrupt police, come on, corrupt politicians, all these things are being exposed because it's the perfect storm. Someone say perfect storm. It's the perfect storm. It's the perfect setup for a Pentecost baptism outpouring of the Holy Spirit. God is setting you up. There's about to be a comeback, a boomerang. There's about to be a bang, bang. There's about to be a boom. Listen, I've been prophesying that in May to June, expect a Pentecost boom. And we've been seeing it in the Dow. We've been seeing it in the stock market. We are seeing an increase. Come on. The Dow, the NASDAQ, the stock market is going way up, people of God. I'm telling you right now that your finances are going to go way up. I'm telling you right now that your your favorite is going way up. Your blessings are going way up. Your membership, your donorship, your partnership is going way up. Your prayer life, your fear of the Lord is going way up. Do you know why? It's because there's shaking and there's testing that's happening. 
But the ones who are humble and pure and have prepared themselves, God's about to elevate them. God's about to promote them. I'm telling you today, God is about to do what no man can do. God's about to do what no political party can do. Rabbi, God's about to do what no one race, what no one people group can do. God is about to do what no denomination, what no fellowship and alliance, what no coven and no false covenantal relationship can do. God is about to show up and show up. So Pentecost, Shavuot. This means the Feast of Weeks. It's a barley harvest. Come on. It means Feast of Weeks. It also means the first fruits. My gosh. Someone say amen. Someone say I'll receive it. If you're receiving right now, someone say amen. Hallelujah. This is ha, 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 the first fruits of, uh, of the harvest, people of God. This is the first fruits of harvest or the festival of weeks. There's many different names, but why am I sharing this? Because from Passover to now, from Pesach, April to now, from Passover, 40 days plus 10. That's why Pentecost is 50. 40 days plus 10. 40 plus 10 is 50. Remember, what does 50 stand for? 50 stands for Jubilee. There's a jubilee anointing upon America. There's a jubilee anointing upon your life. 40 plus 10 equals 50. Pentecost, jubilee. What does jubilee stand for? Jubilee stands for set the captives free. If any person is in a financial debt, if any person owns, owes their land to somebody, your land will be returned to you. Your land will be restored to you. Come on, things are being returned and being re re restored. Things are coming back to you. That's the Jubilee anointing. So therefore, it's a nullification. Someone say no. The works of the enemy that try to keep you in a financial debt, that try to keep you in financial slavery. The works of the enemy is nullified. Someone say amen. Harabahaya. So this is the first fruit. My gosh. This is not the end all be all, but it's the first and the beginning of it. Someone say amen. Someone say preach, Pastor Ben. I want to say one more thing uh, about Pentecost to Shavuot. And listen, I do want to see you tonight in Anaheim, okay, at 7 p.m. We're having an anointing service, Pentecost, Shavuot anointing service. It's going to be incredible. Can't wait to see you. Amen. Come with an expectation, people of God. I want to say one more thing on Pentecost, Shavuot, before I shift here. Hallelujah. Exodus 34, verse 22. Celebrate the festival of weeks with the first fruits of the wheat harvest. Woo! Some say first fruits. My gosh. That is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. It's the celebration. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. Listen, in midst of the evil and the injustice and the corruption and the hardship, celebrate, 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 celebrate. Why? Because it's the first fruit of blessings. First fruit of blessings. First fruit of blessings. Celebrate, celebrate. Celebrate, celebrate, Shara Baba. Remember last week, exactly one week ago, President Trump decreed that church is essential and that the governors, the fear mongering, the uh, political agenda, the puppeteering, the corrupt governors cannot do anything about it. About it, about it, yeah, we about it. So one week ago, last Friday, President Trump decreed that church is essential. Isn't that incredible? How many churches are being opened this weekend in America for Pentecost? Come on. And in the upper room, it was the heavens were open. In the upper room, they were waiting. The door was closed. They were praying. They were wondering. They were pressing in. But listen, in Pentecost, Shavuot, in the upper room, the church was born. The heavens were open. The winds of sudden change began to the thrust in, bang, 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 tongues of fire rested upon the people. Hora baba, hora baba, hai. Someone say, open. Someone say, open. 
How many churches are going to be open this weekend for Pentecost? But last week, I released a prophetic word that from that Friday to today, expect seven days of miracles. Well, expect seven days of visitation, seven days of glory, seven days of miracles, miraculous turnaround. And you know what, people like that? Tomorrow, someone say tomorrow, tomorrow. Is when SpaceX and NASA launch out into space. It's the first spaceship that the United States has released in nine years. And some people are like, well, Pastor Ben, why is that so important? You know, when there's injustice happening and where, 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 you know, there's a uh, crime happening and why is that important? You know, like, why do we care so much about a SpaceX and NASA uh, uh, issue or matter? Who cares about going to the space when we have enough problems on Earth and in Minneapolis and in America? Who cares? Do you know why? Because... You and I are not meant to stay stuck in a problem. We're meant to keep moving forward and moving beyond. And God is solving it. God is releasing solutions. And he does not want you to stay stuck as a victim. He does not want you to stay stuck in a realm. But he wants you to dream bigger. He wants you to think higher. He wants you to go beyond. Come on. This is the first fruit year. 2020, 5, 7, 80. And mark his words, the Lord's been ministering to me in the last few days about the next four months until 5781. Listen, if you're with me right now, someone say amen, give some hearts and likes, and do share. The Lord's been ministering to me about, uh, and I'm going to release a prophetic word probably in the next week, about the next four months. Okay, because this is the first fruit year of this decade. Well, this is a first fruit year. Some say first fruit. My gosh, I'm feeling the Holy Spirit. If you're with me today, say amen. Exodus 34, 22. And listen, tomorrow, there will be signs in the sky. Tomorrow. Because SpaceX and NASA is going to launch out of Florida. Shoo. My gosh. If I didn't live in California, I'd probably live in Florida, honestly. <laughs> well, Florida has been like my third home in the last two years. Exodus 34, 22, 43, celebrate the festival of weeks with the first fruits of the wheat harvest and a festival of ingathering. Someone say ingathering. What does that stand for? Ingathering stands for the harvest, stands for the ingathering of the barley crop of the wheat. What does wheat stand for? Wheat is gold. Wheat is a golden substance. Wheat is heavy. We are in a time right now where God has been separating the wheat from the shaft. God has been separating the sheep from the goat. We are in a time right now where God has been separating the believer from the non-believer, the kosher from the non-kosher, uh, the remnant from the rest. God, God has been separating. He's been sifting. He's been sifting and shifting because he's in gathering the gold. He's in gathering the heavy. Remember, when, when, the, when it's time for the harvest, what do they do? They throw, come on, someone say throw. They agbalo, they throw the grain. And when they throw the grain, the shaft or the outer coat, the outer layer. Come on, somebody, who am I talking to? The outer coat, the outer layer, the shaft, the skin. Shaft, the shaft, the skin. It falls and flies away. Into the wind, into the abyss like the coronavirus. It flies away like all the false media and propaganda and all the Jezebelic false prophets. It just flies away like chaff. It is nothing. None ya. None ya business. But wheat, someone say wheat, the barley, which is heavy, which is gold like my hair. The wheat, imagine my head being like the wheat, heavy, because I'm heavy headed. Anyways, yeah. the wheat, which is heavy and golden, it falls to the ground. But the shaft, the outer skin layer, the excess that must be circumcised, that extra, the fat, the nonsense, the minors, not the majors, the extras, not the main thing, the mumbo jumbo, not the core of the matter, the shaft flies away. So we've been in a time and a season where there's been a separation of wheat and chaff. If you're not happy with how much wheat 
you've ingathered, you need to ask yourself. You need to ask. If you're not happy about the harvest you've been receiving, about what you've been ingathered, you need to ask yourself. Have you invested in the right places? Someone say amen. All right. So Exodus 34, 22, 43. Someone say hallelujah. I want to read more passage before I begin to minister to you personally in the mighty name of Jesus. If you're receiving right now, say amen. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 13. I've been saying it for weeks. I believe that this Pentecost is the most significant Pentecost since Acts chapter 2. Listen, hear me now. I believe that this Shavuot, this festival of weeks, this festival of ingathering, this festival of first fruits. Remember, this is the first fruit of blessings. This is the first fruit of what's to come. And there's a shaking and a sifting. The shaft is flying. Things are being exposed because God is letting the heavy barley wheat glory financial foundation to stay and to remain. God bless you, Pastor Steve Mercado. However, I've been saying this for, for weeks, that I believe that this is the most, or possibly maybe the most significant Passover Shavuot since Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 verse 1, when the day of Pentecost came. And listen, people think Pentecost is Sunday. It's actually not. Pentecost is today, it's tomorrow. Because every Jewish festival falls on Shabbat. All right, remember. We don't move on a Gregorian Greek Roman calendar, okay, which is the Lord's Day, which is Sunday, although I do believe that there's something very holy and sancti sanctity about Sunday. But real Shabbat is Friday to Saturday. So Acts chapter 2, when the day of Pentecost came, which was pretty much today to tomorrow, you follow me, they're all together in one place. Be mindful of who has gathered with you right now. They're all together in one place with one sound. Does it, does it look like we're all together right now or does it look like we're all divided right now? We're all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house and they were sitting. And they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire to separate it. Come on, weed in the shaft. Separated and came to rest on each of them. My gosh, and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak in other tongues. My, my, my. Someone say amen. Listen, one of my words for the month of June, you can watch it. Uh, I, I ministered on it yesterday. You can watch it on YouTube. Uh, in this month of June, June in Hebrew is Sivan. Someone say Sivan. Listen, in this month of June, I believe God's going to release the breath of heaven, which means the winds of God. God is about to release the breath of heaven or the winds of God. And there's going to be a cleansing. There's going to be a sweeping. There's going to be uh, the winds are going to wipe and sweep away. Come on. There's going to be a sweepstakes. There's going to be uh, the winds are going to blow. Wake, oh, wake, oh, north wind. Wake, oh, wake, oh, south wind. Blow over me. There's going to be an awakening of the winds of God. Winds of change. Some say amen. And, uh, so they're all together in one place. All right. Listen, people of God. Today's Pentecost. Today to tomorrow, it's Pentecost. Shavuot. It's the first fruit of many blessings that's to come. Hallelujah. Someone say amen. Hallelujah. Listen, expect Pentecost power. Expect Pentecost harvest. Expect Pentecost blessing. You gotta expect a baptism and outpouring. Look, this is just the first fruits, people of God. This is just the first fruits. This is just the beginning. It's not the end. This is just the beginning. Someone say amen. And listen, I want to pray for you right now. Father, I pray over all my friends and family. Father, I pray that you will anoint us afresh in the Shavuot, in this Pentecost season. God, this is Pentecost week. Tomorrow, we're going to see SpaceX and NASA launch in Florida. And there is a boom in the upper room. And there is a Pentecost super bloom. And God, I thank you for all my friends watching now and on the replay. Touch them. Bless them. Anoint them. Keep them. Let the shaft fly away and let the wheat fall. Woo! Bang, bang, bang. Bang! God, I pray. Keep us. God bless America. Bless Minneapolis. Bless President Trump. Bless the African American community. Bless the white community. Bless, bless America, Lord. We need your peace. We need your grace. In this Pentecost Shavuot time and season. 
God, I thank you today. Keep us safe. Keep us safe and protected in your power, in your fire, in your glory. Someone say amen.